Welcome back to Jatai Academy. Today we're using Emma Watson as our haircut inspiration when she had her awesome little pixie. So let's get started. We're going to start with a, a parting right on the side at the center of the recession, going straight back to the quarter part down to the crown. It's going to separate the top of the head from the bottom. We're going to use the feather styling razor uh, with the R blade. The R blade has a little bit more exposures and less of a guard, so you have to be a little more careful with it. And we're going to start, we're going to go shorter at the top of the section and then getting longer towards the bottom of the section over the ear. So we still want to keep it short, but I want to leave a little bit of hair over the ear like she had in some of her photos. Her photos had a variation of length according to when she was growing it out or, or how, sh how fresh it was initially. So I'm going to kind of use an amalgamation of all the haircuts. I'm going to go shorter at the top, longer over the ear to give us a little bit of coverage over the ear and that'll probably help with these doll heads because the hair gets a little bit pokey. Now I'm taking a, a pretty broad stroke so I want to keep this section very very softly cut so if I use a small tight close motion it'll give me a stronger line. A broader stroke across the section will give me a much softer line so I want to keep this very very soft. Working that down, now I'm going to go through and check the length and see how it's looking. And I like the length at the ear, but I think it's a little bit long at the top of the section. So I'm going to go back and take it a little shorter at the top of the section and blend that down to the length that I already have at the bottom of the section, just to kind of tighten it up a little bit and make it a little shorter. But leave my length over the ear. Just going to clean up this last section here. Make sure everything looks good as is the length that I want it to be. That's looking pretty good, so we're going to continue on. Our next section here, you'll see I start to walk my guide. So I'm going to remove the previous and only take the section directly in front of the hair that I'm about to cut. I'll use that as my guide length and work that all the way through down. Now once I get back past the mastoid, I'm going to start going much tighter towards the nape, but I'm still going to walk my guide. So I'll use my guide length at the top of the section and work that down into the nape, and I want that nice and clean at the nape. Section that out of the way. Pull this straight out from the head using my previously cut section as my guide length a real broad stroke and feathering that section all the way down to where I get to a nice tight clean nape. Be sure to follow us on social media at Jatai Feather. We'll keep you updated on everything that we're doing and new posts in the Academy as well. Check everything out make sure it blends smooth and now I'm just going to continue to walk that guide all the way back into the center back. Still pulling it into the previously cut section, trying to keep the same broad stroke that I was keeping throughout the whole haircut. The thing about a walking guide that I really want to pay attention to is that I want to keep all my section sizes the same. So the more consistent that I can keep each width of each parting, the smoother that my transition is going to be from front to back. If I take inconsistent section sizes, I'm going to end up with some really lumpy layering from the front to the back, and then I have to go through and spend a lot of time cross-checking that. So the more diligent that I am in the beginning, the more time it's going to save me in the long run. And still continuing parallel sections all the way until I get to the very center of the back, and trying to keep everything as consistent as possible. through to the center. Now as I keep this line parallel, I will actually cross the center of the back in the bottom part of the nape and that's okay because when I do the other side it's going to also cross and it's going to blend perfectly left to right. So the back is completely done by walking the guide all the way around to the center of the back. So consistent section size, tension, and razor stroke, you'll get good results. Once I got that finished, I'm going to go through and check everything out, make sure it looks like I want it to, fine tune anything that I need to, and now we're going to start fine tuning the section right over the ear. 
So I've left that a little bit longer so I can go back in and fine tune it more precisely to fit the way that the hair grows, the thickness and the cowlicks and all that. And this is just gonna take patience and diligence to go through and fit it in. You can't just go through and quickly, you know, razor off some hair and expect it to flow perfectly. It takes a lot of time and a lot of experience and, and touch as well to know how much hair to take off and how much hair to leave. And that's only going to come from experience. So I'll start with a, a really light touch and take a little bit, check it out, take a little more, check it out until I get it to kind of lay in and fit exactly like I want it to. And I just want a little peek over the ear. I don't want to cut it completely outlined over the ear. I just want to have a little bit of the ear peeking through. That's looking pretty good. Now I want to thin this little piece right here in the front. I think it's too thick, so I'm just going to lay the blade against and feather some of that weight out. And I have to have a really, really light touch. I'm not trying to go through and take a lot out. I would rather take a lot of little pieces as opposed to a lot of thickness in one stroke. And that's looking pretty good, so let's move on to the top. Now on the top section, I'm going to take a, a horizontal section straight across the top. I'm going to pull this up and whatever length that I feel it needs to, I'm just going to lay my thumb against the blade and cut that length off and round the shape out to where it blends in with the sides and it rounds around the top. So I don't want a square shape. I want a nice soft round shape and just go through and take off as much hair as I need to to make that shape fit in. And now I'll walk that guide back to the next section using my length in the front. Laying my thumb across the blade, cutting any extra lengths off. Making sure it blends on both sides. And I'm just going to continue to walk this guide back. So as I walk, I only take a little bit of the previous section pull it back into the section that I'm cutting, and then use that as my guide length, bevel the top, and work that all the way back until I run out of hair. Last section right here, not a whole lot to take off, but a little bit of a corner. So we'll take that through, and there we go. Now here I want to go through, put some texture in the top, and just channel through and remove some weight. This is very, very similar to if I was to use a, a regular scissor and channel cut through on the top, except the only difference is I'm using a, a razor blade, so I have to be careful to not use a lot of pressure and use a lot of force. And since this is the guarded blade, it gives me a lot more safety so I don't have to worry about cutting their scalp, cutting too much of the hair, and I can get just a nice kind of thinning and separation throughout the top. Comb some of that hair out of the way, add my next section through. Now by combing the hair across the head and using my razor to pull little sections down, that gives me a little bit more tension of the blade against the hair and actually will cut more hair. Separate around the top. I want to kind of fine-tune that in around the edges so I have a little more softness around the front. And I'll also go through and do the top again. Initially, I combed everything from left to right. Now I'm going to comb everything from right to left so I get an evenness in my movement and an evenness with my texture. If I do everything just comb to one side, then I won't have the same movement on both sides. So I want to comb it to the left, then comb it to the right, and that way I can make it really, really neutral on top. After I've got the top thinned like I wanted and got enough texture to it, I'm going to go through and start working on our fringe, on our bangs. And this is very, very similar to what I did over the ear. I just want to start with a small little piece delicately and gently run the blade lightly across it a lot of times to create a lot of softness and a lot of an angle to the cut. And I just whittle it down. I take a little piece, I look at it. Is it short enough? No, take a little more. See where it wants to separate naturally and then use that as a, a way to sep separate and segregate each individual little section. 
go through delicately and gently with the razor and just start fine tuning it in. This is just a, an exercise in patience and diligence. Use a sharp blade as well because a sharp blade helps a lot. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, give us a thumbs up, and click the notification bell, and we will let you know whenever we have new content that's being posted. And here I'm just going to repeat the same motions, the same kind of technique that I did on the left side as on her right side. And I want to get her bangs as balanced as possible. And that's just going to take a lot of fine tuning and making sure that everything fits and flows just perfectly. So again, patience and a feather light touch. That's the trick. Looking pretty good. I think that that's pretty good. Now let's blow it dry, get our shape in there, and then we'll fine tune it more if we need to. And I think the overall shape looks pretty good. We got a nice crop in the back. We got a little bit of hair over the ears. And we got a short little fringe. Be sure to check out Jatai Academy, and there's all kinds of great stuff on there. We'll see you next time.